Good morning again and welcome back to Emmett Grove Baptist Sunday School Hour. We're <clears throat> here to uh, give God's Word this morning. Um, we're in the subject uh, of the series of eternal rewards and this has been quite a study. It's been, uh, uh, as God's Word does, uh, a lot of times uh, um, in my experience it expands itself and uh, what you think we might could uh, speak through or talk through in a few weeks turns to a few months and, and that's good. That is very, very good when we can uh, uh, when we can mine into the Bible and, and God's Word, and uh, so thankful for for Jesus, so thankful for uh, for for what He did for us on the cross, so so thankful for His teachings, um, thankful uh, for uh, the Bible uh, that that tells us God's will for us in our lives, and uh, and so uh, what we uh, are studying is what happens at the end of our life. What how are these rewards, the eternal rewards. Uh, and uh, so uh, it's just been a great study, and uh, so today we'll we'll continue on with that. Uh, uh, it seems like we'll be in this a few more weeks uh, uh, in the minimum. Uh, so let's go to the Lord in prayer and ask for his blessings on his word that he would uh, speak through me as unworthy as I am. Father, we do thank you again for what we just said, uh, for salvation uh, through Jesus, and thank you that he's our king. Uh, he's a king now. He's on. He's at your right hand, Lord. He's... Uh, he's uh, um, uh, over all things, all authority has been handed to him, and he he is our hero and our savior, and we we praise your name for him, uh, and uh, and Lord, we uh, uh, we thank you, God, that you would even consider beyond eternal life that we even would, Lord, have a reward. It's just a thought that's uh, hard to imagine what what we could even do, uh, God, to to earn anything. But uh, Lord, that you love us and uh, you you encourage us in a sense to live out. Uh, your word, Lord, and your will. Um, so, God, this morning, I pray that you protect your word, use it, Lord, for your glory. Speak to us in a way maybe that we've never been spoken to before, that we might understand the things that are said. And, uh, God, it won't be me speaking. It'll be you. So we ask for your spirit to take total control, God, and just speak these words that you've given us uh, uh, about eternal rewards, God, and these things, God, of our works, the things that we do here on earth, God, that will glorify you and, and Lord be rewarded in the end. And we ask all these things in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. Um, so <clears throat> last week, we uh, the base scripture we were looking at was in 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 3. Um, and it kind of starts, I guess, around verse 11 and um, maybe 10 and then just kind of works its way down through uh, 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 through uh, 15. And, uh, and so last week in this scripture we'll read it in just a second just to, to back up a little bit we talked about good works we talked about works that will remain we talked about and you said what are works works are is our life that's what we do uh and let, we need to back up something here and, and, and realize that this is for believers uh we never want to speak anything of god's word and say well this is just for 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 believers in jesus christ the rest of you just go home no that's not at all what we're saying <laughs> listen if you don't know him, you need to know him, uh, and to know his word, it will, you, it will certainly you'll know your need for him. Uh, so it's not it, it, the audience is not directed uh, audible uh, to to, to non-believers, but it is written to believers. There will be no rewards for anyone that's outside the kingdom of God, outside of Jesus. So uh, the focus is on that this morning, on, on and it has been on, on eternal rewards. Uh, Jesus' words are, are, you have your reward if you don't know him. I mean, what you on life is, is this is as best it gets on planet Earth is, is if you don't know him. For a, for a Christian, I heard this saying, it's the worst it gets. I mean, so you think, like right now I'm thinking, man, I got grandbabies. I've been, we've been praying for grandbabies. It's like a new part of our life. We just love our children. Uh, we just we spent this past week with our grandbaby uh, um, and uh, just wonderful things. I mean, just beyond uh, I, I told someone today the best best days of my life, and it's uh, and I have to watch how you say that because you may offend something. Uh, I don't want to offend God for sure, but but uh, they really are. They're just some good times, and uh, uh, but uh, but but our our, our salvation um, in 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 the end days and these these rewards that, that come are uh, uh, are on believers. So the way we live our life is very very important. Um, as we say these things, um, uh, so these good works we, we mentioned that last week, uh, and, but then there's a contrasting verse in this scripture. Let's just go there just a minute as we begin, and let's just reread this. Now our, we started out. I don't want to go back and pull everything back from the beginning, but we started out in Second Corinthians, and I think I, 
think I misquoted that last week as 1 Corinthians. Uh, funny how God gives me recall sometimes after I make a mistake. But anyway, uh, that's why we repent, right? We correct ourselves. Uh, 2 Corinthians 5.10. Remember it says about talking about the judgment seat. Let me, let me see if we can get the old fingers working this morning. And um, I tell you, it's been a challenge getting through this because of all the scriptures scattered everywhere. I'm trying to mark five or six places in the Bible. Uh, but 2 Corinthians was, where we, was our, one of our base scriptures. Um, first of all, it was a, a Revelation 22.12. Jesus said, I'm coming, coming quickly, and I have my reward with me to, to render to each man according to his works. That's what Jesus said. If I missed a, a word or two, it's pretty much what I just said. Then Paul would go on to say, uh, in 9 and 10, in 2 Corinthians 10, uh, uh, excuse me, 5, uh, uh, 9 and 10, therefore we also have our, our ambition, whether at home or absent, to be pleasing to him, be pleasing to God. And here it is. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ. Really what this is, the Bema seat of Christ. That's why we say it's for believers. These are for those that know Christ. So that each one may be recompensed, that word we talked about a few weeks ago, payback, uh, for his deeds in the body concerning uh, excuse me, according to what he has done, whether good or bad. So that that set the stage for good and bad works. Last week, we talked about the good works. In 1 Corinthians uh, 3, uh, Paul talks about that again, about that testing of our works. And basically, is is another set of scriptures about that, that judgment that is coming. Um, uh, and then he, he goes on to say here in 1 Corinthians 3, 11, uh, we'll go down through 15. He says, For no man can lay a foundation other than the one which is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Foundation is your life. What are you building your life on? Uh, the truth of God's words. Now, in verse 12, Now, if any man builds on the foundation with gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, or straw, each man's work will become evident for the day, that's that day we stand before him, that beam of seat, will show it because it is to be revealed with fire. We, we talked about that last week. And the fire itself will test the quality of each man's work. We'll stop right in just a second. That fire is Jesus' examination of our lives. Uh, every believer will stand, not, not in judgment of sin. Just throw that out the window. It is not for any sin. It's basically almost, in a sense, what you fail to do with, with your sins of omission, certainly commission. That can hurt your reward. Please understand that. But it is not about sin. It's not about salvation. Paul going to say that. Uh, so the fire is Jesus' examination of our works. That's what in, in anything that is that doesn't stand uh, in, a, in obedience to him and glory to him will, will be, quote, burned away, uh, which means it holds no value. Here it is. Uh, so in 14, now these are the two verses. Last week was this verse. If any man's work uh, which he has built on it remains, in other words, if it survives his fire, his examination, he will receive a reward. Went over that last week. Good works. Here is today's focus on that. If, notice there's an if. Both of those are ifs. 14 starts with an if. 15 starts with an if. It's works. It'll be tested by God, by, by Jesus. He'll examine these things. Here it is in 15. If any man's work is burned up, in other words, it did not make it through the fire, he will suffer loss. That's our subject today. Suffer loss. But he explains this. I'm glad Paul put this in there. Paul's, uh, you know, he was totally, just totally guided by the Holy Spirit of God and just one of the great writers of the Bible. Wrote, wrote most of all the New Testament. And uh, thank God for, for Paul. You know, Tim was talking Wednesday night about the people that God chose. Um, and it doesn't matter how great of what you might think yourself as being great or not great or whatever in the kingdom, you're, you're important. <laughs> whatever God gives you to do according to your ability, what he gives you to do. I'm glad he chose Paul because I tell you, Paul, just he was he was God's man from the beginning. He, even Paul didn't know it until he got knocked down by the light uh, on the road. Um, but but he, he, he says that, that if our works are burned up, these uh, my works, and remember, these are believers. Uh, that's that's those that know Jesus. Um, these these are not. I wouldn't say we're, we're all men are, are <laughs> we're all sinners. Please please understand that. But what I'm saying here is this is someone that knows God, knows Jesus, and, and, and is a member of God's family. That he will suffer loss. I can do things that ain't going to last. That don't mean they're. We're going to talk about that in a minute. They're they're useless. And he will suffer loss. But Paul would add this in there to to explain. That this doesn't mean salvation, he says. But he himself will be saved. In other words, you, you can't be unsaved. You can't you can't be saved and then lose your salvation. Never. 
and you never you ne and God's never going to pull sins back out of your life and put them before you again. He does not even remember them. I don't know how he does that. But he never brings those back up. So we need to understand that. Yet, yet we will suffer loss yet as so as through the fire. So there is something that is being being lost here. So uh, in this contrast in between 14 and 15, two different works, one that lasts durable, valuable, just like the foundations um, that we build on in 12. We talk, we talk about this for th two or three weeks. Gold, silver, and precious stones are high carbon content. They don't burn by fire. They're not. And that's just an analogy, folks. It's just an illustration. It's not literally... God's not going to strike a big torch, and and uh, that it's just the reality of what fire does to things that are that are durable and lasting, and things that are not. Uh, fire consumes certainly hay, straw, and wood uh, instantly, and it's poof, it's gone. Um, it's lasting, remains. Just remember, you said those things that remain. What what remains? That's exactly what we're talking about here. But today is what won't remain. Uh, so we're going to look at these works that are burned up. We're also going to look at this subject of loss because. Because we will suffer loss uh, if, our, if our works are burned up. Um, and so, as we start this, I, I want to talk about this, this losing thing right here, this loss. And, the, and, it, and it's going to be all throughout this lesson, okay? Um, but let's go to Second John. You say, wow, we're, we're just going. Yeah, we are. We are moving all over the place. Second uh, John 8. Uh, and then you might say, Second John 8 what? Well, it, the verse 8. There is no, there is no chapters in, uh, in in Second John. It's just it's just verses like Jude. There's uh, uh, but it's the second uh, the second book of John. Um, and it's verse eight. And I'm just gonna go there. And we're gonna come back to this verse in just a minute. Okay, uh, is when we close. We're gonna we're gonna get the context of it. We're just gonna pluck it out just a minute right here in verse eight and look and read this. Watch yourselves. Talk about your life that you do not lose what we have accomplished. Interesting how he says that I don't lose what we have accomplished. I always like to think about things. Whenever I start to think about and say something like, I, I did this or I did that, um, and, and I know a lot of people that use that word, they probably don't mean anything by it, but it's always good to say we. Uh, even when I prepare Sunday school lessons, I like to, uh, God to guide me in such a way that I say that we have done this. And as You may think I got somebody helping me. Well, I do. It's God's Holy Spirit. So the we is me and is me and Jesus and me and God and it should be in your life too. So watch your eyes and uh, and, and and bring we in. So, uh, but watch yourselves that you do not lose what what we have accomplished, but that you may receive a full reward. And um, this this verse right here really is is, is unique in the Bible, where, and and it's one that connects. Uh, it might be the strongest verse in Scripture, actually. I actually kind of read that somewhere else as a, a commentary. It might have been in my Bible. I can't remember. But it really is. Uh, connecting, upholding God's um, commands. Uh, Jesus would say, if you love me, you'll keep my commands. That, in other words, I'm his, and I'm going to do what he says. Uh, my obedience. Uh, that uh, connects obedience uh, and the uh, rewards, the eternal rewards. It's like it, it, this verse connects those two. They have something to do with one another. That if I'm obedient, then I will be rewarded in the end. Um, um, repaid in, in these words that are just baffling to us. Uh, that, um, that these two are, are, are together and, and one is dependent on the other. In other words, my obedience and, and, and how I live my life is, is going gonna, is gonna, to uh, uh, um, show in the end as to how I'm rewarded. Uh, um, and we already mentioned this loss is not salvation, but there is something to receiving a full reward. Um, uh, Jesus said something very similar in Revelation. When uh, in, 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 it's interesting here that John received the revelation from Jesus in, in the book of Revelations. But over in, in Revelation three eleven, uh, Jesus spoke some very similar words. Listen to what he said here, closing out that. Uh, uh, let me let me just go there. Um, just a second. It's always good. It's just it's always good to go right to it. And you know, sometimes I write the scriptures down, and I love to what I write. I I, I usually have a, a the ability to to retain. But he was writing to the to the church at Philadelphia there in, in chapter three of Revelations and in, in eleven. Here's what he said. And notice the similarity to to, to Revelation twenty two twelve. He says, "I am coming quickly." The same thing he said in twenty two twelve. Hold fast what you have. Hold on to it so that no one will take your crown. That is, a, I don't even know if I'm going to 
talk much about that, but you got to just think about that. I'm coming quickly. Hold on fast to what you got. Don't lose what you have. Hold on to it so that no one will take your crown. I thought about Satan. I thought about the devil. That's all he wants is to throw us down and, and, and to uh, discredit us before God. Remember, he does that. He stands in heaven just uh, just accusing the brethren. Remember that over there somewhere at the end of Revelation? Um, yeah, that's all he does. But Jesus is there making intercession. You know, he's, he's putting 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 out those lies that he says. Not that God's full by it. That doesn't, that's not what we're saying here. But he is the accuser. And that's uh, especially God's people accusing us. Um, and uh, But I thought about him being a crown snatcher because he can flat mess up your life. And this is really what we're talking about. Don't let the enemy have control over you. Um, as a believer, but I'm coming, hold fast, so that no one will take your crown. We might bring that verse back out in a little bit deeper study when we get to the crowns that we might receive, those five crowns that are mentioned in Scripture. Um, and so, uh, um, now the context here, like I said, we're going to come back to it in a minute, is about being deceived. That's, we must remember that. Uh, and uh, that's going to be something we're going to just look at. As a matter of fact, as we close, we're going to come back to these verses again uh, in Second John, and we're going to look at 7 through 11 about being misled. So key there. That's why Jesus said, hold fast and, and don't lose these things. And I think a lot of what's going to happen in loss or reward is going to be through that, through deception. We could be deceived. Uh, think about that deception that Jesus talked about in the tribulation. Uh, in Matthew 24, 4, where he said something like that, even so that uh, even the elect might be deceived. No, no, that's not, excuse me, that's not that right, that's not the right verse. 24, uh, uh, 12 talked about the uh, those that are coming uh, in the end days, it's still in the end days. Uh, we, that verse is later. Uh, my verses are coming, uh, getting, uh, converging on me. But don't be misled, that's what he said. Jesus said, don't be misled and watch. Don't let anyone take your crown. Don't lose what you started. Kind of what we're talking. About. So let's look at this 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 accomplished um, that, that that what what uh, John wrote here. Watcher says that you do not lose what we have accomplished. Um, that is those good works. That's last week. That's uh, those good things we did. We had several of those we talked about last week um, that concern reward. Uh, really, it's everything God's word says about what we should do, um, how we should live our lives. Fruit produced from it. You know. Uh, uh, there, I'll tell you something. If you just live according to the Bible as best you can with God's help and repenting and and uh, and, and all of the wonderful things that we do to, to grow, uh, you're going to produce fruit. And just it's just going to happen. Uh, 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 good trees don't produce bad fruit, uh, and uh, but bad trees don't produce good fruit. So you're a good tree. Uh, you're uh, if you're if you're and if you know Jesus, you're you're a good tree. Uh, but fruit produced, uh, spiritual growth. These are the things that we've accomplished. Um, uh, uh, growth, um, and uh, that would help us to avoid backslidden states. If I'm reading the Word of God and I'm praying every day and, and I'm, uh, and I'm hunger, hungering for the Word, I'm, you know, I just want to get all I can get. I want to hear all the Bible teaching and prayer meetings that I can hear. just want to put God in me, you know, because if you don't put God in you, Satan is certainly going to come in and fill in that uh, fill in those those voids in there. So the more full of God you are, the less Satan's got a chance to to get in. That's a good place to be when you're when you're uh, when your when your cup is. Uh, remember when you, uh, Pastor Tim talking about that your cup is full. It's good to have your cup full, but it doesn't always stay full. It'll you know it'll talking about the Holy Spirit of God, um, and and so you have to keep doing that. It's something that has to be refilled. That God does staying close to him. So things that are accomplished could be ministries, could be something we've done. Um, you know, I think about uh, uh, just oh, just any kind of ministry for God, even we think about Operation Christmas Child that is a ministry that we love so dearly and uh, uh, those things that I have accomplished and, and we could actually uh, throw those things away, all of those good things, uh, ministries could go down. Those are things that, that John is talking about here about being accomplished. Uh, now God does that. It's not people that do it, but people working through God, these things are done. So, things accomplished, the life we live, the good works, and now let's talk about this loss of a full reward. Um, what, it's, what it to me says here, and through studying this and praying over this, is that, that uh, God has a maximum reward for us. In other words, there is a full reward would be everything that we could get from God. Um, you know, I, I got this little thing, this little pet peeve, about about the bare minimum, we just always want to do the bare minimum. It's it's kind of like a, and I was that way, my life, and I still am. 
uh, sometimes. I just want to do the bare minimum. I just want to do, uh, think about school. I think about high school, and all I wanted to do is just get by. You know, and I remember mama, my mom and daddy telling me, you got so much potential. If you just do this and do that, you could do way more. You know, and I was blessed to, to, to be okay in academics and, and, uh, and you know, didn't open books much, but, but got by and, you know, was a, like a B student or whatever. But, you know, they kept, mama kept saying, you could be a straight A student. You, you could do this, you could do that, you know. And, but we just, there's that mindset of just doing just enough to get by. Well, let me tell you something. When it concerns God, that is not the, the, the right attitude to take. Matter of fact, that's what, kind of what this whole lesson is, is avoiding the bare minimum. And let's go for the maximum. Uh, let's, let's go for the best but God has that he has a full reward it's, I love it the way John wrote that but that you may receive a full reward um, uh, that what God has, has in full uh, I may not receive in other words um, I, I might lose what God had for me I could squander it um, I, could, I could fail to bring glory to him in the things that I do I could forfeit that's a good word forfeit ain't a really a good word it's just a good way to describe it I could forfeit what, what God has for me. Now, we've said this before. We said it a few weeks ago, but I just want to read this note that I got here. I really don't need to read it, but, 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 uh, but we've said it before, that God knows exactly and precisely what we are capable of achieving. So his reward, he had, in other words, we could just might say this, that every person born, God has, has a full reward for them. He knows what it is. And uh, and and uh, and he knows that we can accomplish it. He's not giving somebody. He's not setting the bar so high for somebody that can't. He knows each person. If we remember back in the parable of the of the talents, remember that uh, in in Matthew twenty five five we talked about this last week that, that he gives these things according to his own ability. So it, I, I, that just explains it. Uh, that he's not going to give somebody a a, a reward that he can't he can't obtain. God knows exactly what you're capable of. And I so I wrote this. Anything short of what of God's expectation, do you understand that? Not mine, but his. Anything short of that is a loss of what we could have had. That's what the loss is. God knows what we're capable of doing if we would just sell out to him and uh, and be obedient. Um, I, I, even this morning, this lesson, you just I'm telling you, if if I had to write it and teach it two weeks later, I don't know, we could we probably have three, four hours. Uh, it just grows. Uh, even this morning, going back to Romans 8, at the end of Romans 8, at the end of verse 28. Remember it says what? Called according to his purpose, God's purpose. It is not my purpose, it's God's purpose. And uh, and, and so he knows that. Uh, and the question I wrote down here this morning again is, am I going to achieve what God has for me? Am I going to have it, get the full reward that God knows that I can do? And I got no excuse. I really got no excuse uh, um, of, of, of not being able to, to obtain that in the end. So it is a, it is, a full role, full reward that is set for me, but what? How much of that am I going to going to actually receive from God? And it all depends on on the on how you live your life. So let's go back to the go back to kind of our base text this morning in First Corinthians. Back to that three fifteen, and let's look at that. If any man's work, his life is burned up. In other words, it didn't make it, didn't last. He will suffer loss. Paul said. I mean, John just said a while ago that you might receive a full reward. Suffer loss is anything less than that, that full reward, but he himself will be saved yet as through, through the fire. So let's talk about burn up works just for a minute as we continue in that. We just mentioned that's your your lifetime works, what you're doing for God, burned away. Uh, but Jesus' righteous judgment, we mentioned that, uh, went through the fire. It's not a literal fire, but it's just his, his, his looking into things um, that are, and these things that will be burned up, Another, another, just another summary are useless, worthless things, good for nothing. Um, they might even we talked about last week about good works that even gun, even uh, in the case of some good works, they might not last. If it's not for God's glory, then they're probably it's probably not going to last in, in any kind of examination because it was done with wrong motives. Uh, and and some people are doing good works all over the planet Earth that don't know Jesus Christ. There's no glory to God. There's no, they don't give thanks. Remember that? Remember that lesson last week? It's a good lesson last week, I'm telling you. Uh, and, and, and even though humanity uh, benefits and people get helped, God's not glorified in it. And, and those, are, those works are, are, are just, they're burned up. Um, they're, um, and, and of course, we're talking about those people are non, are non believers. So it really doesn't apply in the sense here of eternal rewards. But uh, these things that, that don't have any eternal value uh, done 
for our recognition. Now, this could happen to us as Christians. We could could get focused on things. Matter of fact, uh, um, I, this this uh, probably the same page on your Bible there, First Corinthians four, verse five. Um, and uh, matter of fact, we'll uh, uh, we, we, let me just hold that thought just a minute because I've got it in my notes here coming up. Um, but things done for the wrong motives. Uh, uh, that are that are done for for recognition other than our recognition other than God these are those things that will be burned up that hold no value um, I, I wrote this note uh, God gave me this note said uh, there so I said I uh, burned up works are not rewarded that's plain as day right here if any man's work is burned up he will suffer loss there would be no reward just a loss of reward and not receiving what God has it's a waste of time. Lord, and time is so so critical in what we're talking about here of what our eternal rewards, the time God gives us to, to, to achieve the things that he has set for his purpose. So now, we, let's, this verse we just mentioned in 1 Corinthians 4, verse 5, we're going to look at some things, about four things uh, last week, and these are concerning rewards, and these this is not uh, inclusive of all things. But the way we live our life and and uh, uh, and things to uh, I wrote down here avoiding uh, loss of reward. How what are, what are some things to avoid? And I'll tell you something. These things really get not as much on the outside of what we what we do the physical things, but this goes gets into the heart. This gets into the motives of our our attitudes, the the hidden things. That's why I wanted to bring that verse up to you in verse five. And I know again here we are right in the middle. Uh, the heading here, beginning of chapter four, is servants of Christ. Um, and uh, and it's about God examining. I like this verse, but verse three. But to me, it is a very small thing that I may be examined by you. It's really, what this is, is an examination of our life at the end, the end, uh, or by any human court. In fact, I do not even examine myself. He's, he, Paul said, in verse three. I don't even care uh, what anybody says about me. I don't even care what I think about myself. Now, here's what he says in four, and we'll get five too. Uh, for I am conscious of nothing against myself, yet I am not by this acquitted. Uh, but the one who examines me is the Lord. The Lord Jesus is going to examine me. Exactly what we're talking about. Now, here it is. We're talking about the heart. We're going to talk about some things that are internal here. That maybe someone else might not conceive it. Man, you are not going to escape God's. Uh, he knows the heart. Therefore, do not go on passing judgment before time. That's one of the things we're going to talk about in just a minute, judgment. Do not do that before the time. That's that time until the Lord comes. Here it is. But wait until the Lord comes who will bring to light the things hidden in the darkness. That's, uh, that's things that nobody else sees but God. That is your heart. And disclose the motives of men's heart, and then each man's praise will come to him from God. That, that's perfect verse for what we're talking about right here. Uh, uh, so internal, looking at the heart, hidden things here, that Jesus is going to shine that light, that uh, 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 and that fire is going to come across, and we, he's going he's to show us some things that, of our heart. So I, there's some, some things here we're going to talk about here. Now let's go back to the Sermon on the Mount. Lord, we cannot get away from the Sermon on the Mount. Tim wound that up last, uh, Wednesday before last, and, and uh, I think we're going to be in the Sermon on the Mount for quite, uh, throughout this whole uh, uh, study. But it's in Matthew 6, uh, 5, 6, and 7 actually is the whole thing. But uh, 5, uh, you know, we started like in chapter 5, verse 44. And if you go down through 6, about 18. We mentioned this the other day about rewards, so much about rewards. Let me just count these again. One, two, three. Got them highlighted. One, two, three, four, uh, five, um, uh, six. I see seven times here the, the word reward. And so we're talking about avoiding loss of reward. And that, I don't know that the, uh, there's a set of scriptures like this that's, uh, that, that's together, contiguous right here together that, 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 that addresses that. And certainly in verses one, uh, two, and uh, five, I want to read those right here real quick. We just we read we did we studied five last week six five. Here it is: the charitable deeds. What's talking about? This is things you're doing for good. People are doing for good. Okay, beware of practicing your righteousness before men to be noticed by them. Otherwise, you have no reward with your Father who is in heaven. You got no reward. Right, there it is, right there. No, there's no reward for for anything that is done. But for before men, for for man's glory, uh, so when you give to the poor, do not sound a trumpet before you, as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, so that they may be honored by men. Truly, I say to you, they have their reward in full. Now, watch what we just said a while ago. Their reward is what they got here. They got nothing in nothing in heaven. But when you give to the poor, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing. That is that secret thing we talked about, and he's fixing to expand upon that 
even in prayer, so that your giving will be in secret and your Father who sees what is done in secret, that might even be in that darkness that nobody knows, will reward you. There it is right there in verse 4. Good verse. Uh, he will reward you for those things unseen. And then 5 is the prayer we talked about last week. So let's look at this. What's revealed? The heart is revealed here. I just wrote some notes. Going to church to be seen. Um, a lot of people do that. Oh my goodness, what a what a terrible loss that is uh, of 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 reward of, of just going uh, to be going. You might just go because of tradition. <laughs> oh my goodness, we I I think a lot of us are going to church for so strictly the wrong reasons. Uh, uh, the right mode of being in church is to honor God and to worship God, and you go there for Him and Him alone. Um, and we got to get that right, folks. And if there's anything we need in our worship, it is is that we, we're going for him. I teach Sunday school lessons, and Pastor Tim preaches sermons, and, and uh, people get up and sing in the choir, and they're singing to God, man. I'm telling you, people say, oh, I'm, I'm doing this for the people. I'm doing this. No, 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 no. Uh, I'm telling you what, if you do it to God and he's glorified, people are going gonna, to gonna worship. Uh, uh, they're going to worship God, not you. Uh, but, 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 but going to be seen, given to be seen. Oh, so many people want to let all the things they do be known. Um, and there's a lot of people that, that we see that are that are quick to go, you know, I did this. Did you know yesterday I went and did this for the Lord or yesterday? I, and uh, and um, I know some sometimes it's good to, 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 to bring that up and to give glory to God, but you can sense when someone is talking about themselves and how busy they were for God and doing this. And that, that's the things that, that, that will cause loss of reward. I, I do believe that avoiding that to be seen, that these things in secret, that Jesus plainly uh, tells us about to do these things in secret, there you will be rewarded. God won't forget anything. And we've said this before, leave that up to him and don't worry about people. Um, here's verse five. I thought about this. about It's about hypocrisy, really what it is. It's, it's about trying to be somebody that you're not. And he goes when he talks about praying, he says, when you pray, you're not to be like the hypocrites. And they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and on the street corners so that they may be seen by men. And, um, uh, and he goes on to say, they're truly, I say to you, they have their reward in full. There it is again. They've got all they're going to get. Um, um, uh, but, but how about this thought? Just, uh, just appearing to be good on Sunday, coming all dressed up and and people look at a person from a distance. They don't know anything about this man's heart or woman's heart or whoever, whatever it is. But, oh, but they're in church every Sunday. And that's the thing that you, that's the only thing you can say. They're in church. And you don't know anything inside about them. But but inside of their heart, they don't have any uh, desire to, to worship God. They're there for 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 their motives and for their purposes. And, and that's the hypocrisy here that, that Jesus is warning us against. And those things, I promise you, will will. Uh, cause us to look a loss of reward or no reward, as, as Jesus said here. Uh, wonderful scriptures here, much on here on that. So, so don't be a fake because you ain't faking God. Okay, that's just what what God is saying, and uh, and and uh, and avoiding that loss of hypocrisy. Now, the second one uh, thing I want to bring up this morning, we want to bring up this morning, uh, in avoiding loss is probably one of the greatest sins of 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 uh, Christians and that is the that is the, the 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 sin of unforgiveness I'm telling you trying to control what is said here about this because this this deserves a lot of a, of a reminding to us because unforgiveness is rampant uh and it is in every believer and it is uh, it is one of the worst I think one of the worst sins uh, I wrote down here this is in Matthew 6:15 this is at the very end of the model prayer uh, uh, of praying uh, that, that Jesus wonderful scriptures here in verses five, 5 through uh, 15 but that verse 15 is something now I'm telling you it's one of those mesmerizing verses that you say God what Jesus what what, what do you mean here uh, uh, that you would go on to uh, uh, and forgive us Lord of, of our debts as we've forgiven others uh, forgiven our debtors uh, very a verse that we might not understand either uh, very much, much. Um, what do we, what do we call um, accountability here? Uh, about, about forgiving. You forgive us, and we, we are. You know, you're, you're forgiven so that you can forgive. Uh, but uh, I, I wrote down here that unforgiveness contradicts righteousness. It is on the opposite end. Righteousness is what we want. It's what we want to live. Uh, we want to live that way. But, but un, unforgiveness is on the opposite end of that scale. It is on the very far end. Unforgiveness. Um, Unforgiveness leads to many more sins. Remember, love covers a multitude of sins. Remember that verse? 
Well, unforgiveness uh, leads to many more sins. Listen to these. Anger. It never puts out any anger. It, 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 it uh, upholds hate. Uh, no love there. Uh, hurt, resentment, bitterness, and, and unforgiveness. Listen to me. Listen to this. I'm telling you, this is, this is, uh, is a, as much truth as you will hear today about this. It subjects ones to, to uh, excuse me, it grieves and quenches God's spirit. There, there you, I promise you, you will not be guided by any of God's spirit. You will almost be abandoned in a sense, not that he doesn't, uh, you're still in dwell. But I'm telling you, you want to quench God's spirit, hold an unforgiving spirit uh, against someone in unforgiveness. It is a, it is a, it is like a chemical that just eats away at you. Uh, it, it, it's like an acid and it eats away the soul. And I, you know, every time I sense that in anybody and, and, and even in some of my family members, when I see someone that's kind of holding that grudge and just can't get over it, that you have got to give that to God. You have got to, 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 um, and, and it is sometimes sins against you. And then it's sins that, that you committed against someone else. And unforgiveness, and you can actually forgive somebody that, that has that has wronged you, and go to them and say, "Look, I for, I forgive you, boy." And I tell you, we don't understand the power uh, in forgiveness. Um, certainly in our in our salvation and in our sin, what Jesus did, but but the power that you have as a believer to go and uh, and forgive somebody, and it puts out every fire. It just there's nothing to argue about forgiveness. You can't do it. On the other hand, unforgiveness is, is works in the total opposite, and it is in Satan's favor and definitely does not bring God's. And so look at verse 615. Now he goes on and just gives his model prayer that we all know, and we, I try to pray this prayer every, every day. Um, um, and it's so, so structured, tells us how to pray, and, that, uh, and it's so simple yet so deep. But uh, he would add at the end, uh, when, he, when, he, we, when, he, when he closes out the prayer in 13, for if you forgive others for your transgressions, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not, this is 15, if you do not forgive others, then your Father will not forgive your transgressions. And I've always wondered about that. I, that, that verse is still, still puzzling, not puzzling, I don't think, but it is a very serious verse. Now, let me tell you something. I, I know it doesn't mean that God is will bring back my sins. I think we already said that, and he'll never do that. He'll never bring that back up and say, see what you did. Uh, Lord, I'm glad he didn't go back to my high school years and say, look what you did right here. Look, Remember, remember that. Right? He doesn't do that. God doesn't do that. Remember that. Um, but this, if you don't forgive, then we are subject to something very, very, very serious. It is not our forgiveness of our sins. So what is what what is God saying right here? What is he? Um, what we do when we don't forgive, I, I do believe this that after some time, I don't, I don't mean this week, I mean this is just pondering this for years and years and years, that, that what happens is we become subject to God's discipline. Um, and, and not only that, in, in his discipline, which could be a part of it, uh, is, is that withholding of blessings. Uh, it, this might be his mercy. It might be his grace that's withheld. It might be answers to prayers. We, we know that our that our our sinfulness hinders our prayers, uh, this unforgiveness and uh, a non-repentant. Um, you know, well, I think maybe a good explanation here will take us back to Matthew 18 uh, in the parable of, and this is one of the most powerful par uh, parables there are, 18, uh, and it's um, I think it starts in 21, the parable of the unforgiving um, uh, um, uh, servant, uh, slave, that starts in 23 and goes down through 34. Remember that slave that, that came up to the king and the king called up accounts, settling accounts. Remember, that's what Jesus is going to do. That's what the beam of seed is. He's going to settle accounts uh, in 24. And this slave owed so much. And it really is about his salvation. He had a debt he couldn't repay. It was, it was unpayable. He couldn't. He was no way, not even in a lifetime, could he ever physically repay it. You'll never repay God for what he did on the cross ever. Uh, uh, but then the, the uh, uh, God had mercy, um, um, you know, and, and, uh, and we can just say he sent Jesus for, for all sinners and it's not what you did. It's just just what you believed in him, and um, and your sins were forgiven. And then this guy went out uh, after the, God had mercy on him. The Lord uh, on twenty seven, this Lord of that slave felt compassion and released him and forgave him the debt. That's salvation. That's what he does. Um, uh, redemption and justification. Even though I'm wicked, he let him go. And twenty eight, so this guy went right out and grabbed his fellow slave. Didn't know him, but just a nickel. Didn't know him nothing. Had him thrown in prison, and the guy pleaded with him, said, I, just give me a day, I can pay you back, or give me some time, I can pay you back. 
He said, no, I want it right now. And he had him thrown in prison. And then God found out about it. The king found out about it. And of course, God knows all things. Uh, and uh, he was not pleased. And, uh, and we'll, we'll read from uh, 32 down. Uh, then summoning him, the Lord uh, said to him, you wicked slave, I forgave you of all the debt because you pleaded with me. Should you not also, and here it is, 33 is the verse. Should you not have had mercy on your fellow slave, on your brother, we could say, in the same way that I had mercy on you. And his Lord moved with anger. Here it is. This is that discipline. This is that, uh, what, we, what happens to us in unforgiveness. Listen to what he, what he said, specifically what Jesus said. And his Lord moved with, with anger, handed him over to the torturers until he should repay all that was owed. And then he would say this, bring it into our living room, into our heart. My heavenly Father will, will do also uh, to the same to you if you if he does not forgive his brother from your heart. In other words, if it isn't real, real forgiveness of your brother, my Father in heaven will do that same. I think that you can attach Matthew six fourteen and fifteen to thirty five right here. And write a good note right in your Bible how they're connected. Notice it says here that he was not turned over to the um, executioners but to the torturers until he should repay. What do you think that repay means, until he should repay? I, I, I can tell you, that means repent. That means to turn away from that. Uh, I, want, I, I can't hold this anymore. I got to get. I, I got to unload this unforgiveness. Uh, and, and there's so much liberty, uh, so much liberty when, 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 we're, uh, when, when we uh, forgive. And, and uh, we mentioned that power of forgiveness. Uh, so it's very critical. So unforgiveness certainly, certainly, would cause us loss of reward, uh, miss blessings, a lot of things on planet Earth that we would miss, and certainly on our eternal rewards. And unforgiveness is a very, very, I don't know if it might be the most serious of all offenses uh, concerning eternal rewards. There should be no unforgiveness in our hearts. Uh, go and ask God to help you because we are flesh, and this is one of those things where where we, it can get really a, be a stronghold uh, against us. Remember, these are things of, in the heart. And a lot of people go out and say, oh, they, 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 they let their tongue, uh, let that spark get out, starts those fires. You know, we, we talked about that. Some just hold it inside. Some just hold it in a resentment. And it is just, I'm telling you, it's just, it's just a God killer. God, certainly a, a Holy Spirit uh, quenching, grieving killer uh, to our hearts. So we must be aware of these things. Um, uh, thirdly, we're going to look at one that's almost the same as judgmentalism. Uh, let's go to Romans 14 because this is just right as plain as it can be put, uh, Paul. And we've already talked about this verse too, but Romans uh, 14, 10 through 12, here's what Paul would say here about that, about judging. Uh, and listen to what he, notice what he says here, but you, why do you judge your brother? He's not talking about, he's talking about believers. I mean, this is this is getting within the kingdom here. Very serious. <clears throat> Or you, again, why do you regard your brother with contempt? Uh, for we will all stand before the judgment seat of God. That's the beam of seat, folks. That's the, what we're talking about here. Uh, he, God's going to judge, so you don't judge anybody. For it is written, as, as I live, says the Lord, every knee will bow, shall bow to me, and every tongue shall give praise to God. And here it is in 12. So that each one of us will give an account of himself to God. We're going to give that accounting to him. Examined uh, personally, is, is that's what the beam of the seat is, this examination before us. Uh, and, um, and so don't judge others. Um, very, very serious of loss of rewards are incurred with, with unforgiveness and judgmentalism. And I think these two are some very secretive things. Remember we talked about these things that are in our heart that cause us loss of reward. And we are trying to avoid that. That's why we are bringing these things up this morning. Um, now, number four, the last little point we had here is, is about deception. So we'll go back over here to 2 John again uh, for the last time, uh, at least in this lesson. And we'll pick up in verse seven, deception. You mean deception can cause me a loss of reward? Absolutely. Listen, to, let's get the context of what we, what we talked about in verse eight a while ago in 2 John. For many deceivers have gone out into the world, those who do not acknowledge Jesus Christ. If you ever know to what, what a uh, matter of fact, if you want to know somebody that's an antichrist, there is the antichrist, but then there's antichrist everywhere. That's just those that deny that Jesus is king, that who do not acknowledge Jesus uh, as coming into flesh. They don't believe that he came. Those are deceivers, and those are those are the, the little antichrist that, that are coming. And this is the deceiver and the antichrist. Watch, see, they're both going hand in hand. Antichrist is the deceiver. 
uh, and they're scattered everywhere. They're in the church. Remember the wheat and the tares? They're in the church, folks. Beware. Watch yourselves. We've just talked about that, that you do not lose what, you, what we have accomplished, but that you may receive a full reward. Anyone who goes too far and does not abide in the teachings of Christ and does not have God, the one who abides in the teachings, he has both the Father and the Son. So not to be deceived, and this really doesn't hardly need any explanation. We've heard it. It has been it has been preached in our church for years and years and years about being deceived. Um, that uh, um, that you know a lot of those things that we do we bring on ourselves. What we do sometimes deception in a sense is just an ignorance, not knowing the word. That's no excuse. We're not saying that's an excuse, but what I'm saying is that those kind of sins come upon us in a different way because we 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 don't know God's word and, and we get fooled. And it sounds remember you can take a you can take. 100% truth and put about 1% lie in it and it really contaminates it all and it's really a lie. You hear one false thing and uh, and it really could cause someone to get derailed uh, uh, and, and be deceived in something that sounds like the truth and it's not. That's why it's so so critical to read your Bible and to pray. But but um, So deception can, in a sense can come from the outside, from the enemy and cause us to stumble and in, in the same sense that we might lose uh, our full reward because we don't know God's word, and I'm telling you, we got an ignorant church this this uh, in this society because we don't read the word of God. We just flat out don't don't do it. We don't now. We don't mind coming to, to, to Bible school or whatever, and or uh, uh, to Sunday school to to hear God's word. Let somebody read it to us like we're these little babies in a crib, you know, we're reading a book uh, to them. Um, and uh, we 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 don't mind being read too, but we just don't let don't let I, don't ask me to read, Lord. I, I just you just read it to me. No, that's not. You got to get in there and and read it. Uh, and you won't be deceived if you do that. And it'll keep you it'll keep you alert. Now this is where I was jumping a while ago into this uh, uh, into this deception. And how great it's going to be uh, when I when it first opened up here it was in Matthew twenty four twenty four about about the tribulation. Uh, I really prepared. Per excuse me, perplexing verse here that Jesus would say that there's a deception coming. And it is it is expanding almost daily. Um, people that are deceived, so many people in church, they don't even know, let the world come in and and, 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 and they don't even really don't even know what the truth is. Uh, they, maybe they used to, I don't know. Uh, I, I've just seen it going downhill. Um, and the only reason I know that is because I've been blessed enough and God's kept me with by through grace and mercy to keep me in the word and, and make me a, cause me to become a Sunday school teacher. Uh, you know, and someone said today that if I didn't teach Sunday school, would I be in my Bible? Would I be studying? And the answer is flat out. No, you would not. I wish everybody was a Sunday school teacher to some extent. Um, it's a good thought to think about this. What if we just went into class and we just say, okay, you, uh, uh, Mr. Smith, come up here and teach Sunday school. And that man jumped and said, I can do it. And he might not be the greatest delivery or whatever, but man knew the Bible and he knew what he was studying. That's just a good thought for a Sunday school teacher. I think we come in. We don't even know what scripture we even gonna study that day. We just come in, just, just, just dumb, really. I mean, dumb to what's what's going on. I'm not saying we're dumb people, but we're just you, you're dumb. Remember that word foolishness is all through the Bible, and that the foolish is always associated with those that don't know God. That's exactly what it is. And I, and I and I don't want to offend anybody, but I, I hope that it would beseech you to get busy and get in God's word. So this deception, but this is what Jesus wrote over there. He said so that as to mislead as possible even the elect that is a that is a fascinating verse that's even the even believers can be deceived and, and, and trust me it will be um but but the coming it's getting it's going to get harder and harder to stay true to God's word so deception is the fourth thing we're going to talk about today that that could cause loss of reward not to receive the full reward not salvation not bring back any other sins things we that we the attitudes that we had and the misleadings through deception that causes us not to receive the full reward. Remember, that's what we're talking about today. These are burned up words, things that won't bring us any any reward. No reward are those things where we, we, we fail to get, as John wrote here, that we might receive a full reward. That We won't receive that. Now, I, I just discovered this um, this week when I was writing and studying and praying over the word. Philippians 3, man, I tell you, what a, what a great book. Let's go there and we'll close up in the last few minutes here. Uh, uh, in Philippians, and um, um, it comes in right after Ephesians, or those great epistles right in there. Uh, this is the book of joy uh, in Philippians. What a, it is, it is again, as I said, a wonderful book. But so, Marlon, what are you? What, where are we at over here? We're, we're in Philippians three, 
and uh, the heading right here, uh, I'm gonna look at 12 through 16. That's gonna what we're gonna close on. Um, the, the opening uh, in, in chapter three, uh, my heading here is the goal of life. Man, that's what this, what this whole thing. I, I think last week we wrote down getting ready for eternity. What, what is your goal? Is your goal to get ready for eternity, um, to, be, to be ready to go into God's presence, uh, to receive all these good promises, eternal life, and being in his presence, the two main, main things, and, and then these rewards that we've been studying. But the goal of life, what is your goal of life? And I have often said many, many times as I begin to study God's word and think about my life and think about how God has gotten me, snatched me out of the gutter, and um, and I would have flatlined and, and made it through. I, I'd have, I wouldn't have had a I ain't saying what I what even now. I, I don't examine my own self, as Paul said, but I just think about. I'm so thankful that God gave me a calling to to, to snatch me out of that, the world that I was in, caught up in the world. Not a terrible person, I mean, but just not where I, where God wanted me to be at, at all. And I want to finish well. I just want to. In what time God has given me, I tried to do it my way for so many years, and it was not good. And I, and I remember, just remember praying a very simple prayer: God, I did it my way. That's a terrible, terrible song, by the way, to do it your way. And I'm just ready to do it your way. And it wasn't it wasn't overnight. It took years and years and years. But I just want to finish well and I want to I want to do it God's way. His way is way better than my way. Always has been. But he but he starts in verse three and I like this because we, we had this conversation in class uh of thought Sunday about being reminded. I think something like this. I said, I think we could preach the preach and teach on the same verse every Sunday. And I still would mess up during the week. I mean, that's just how quickly the heart, how wicked the heart is. I mean, we, we, I, you know, no, many, no telling how many times I've taught a Sunday school lesson. I said, man, God, this is the word, the truth. And my heart is pounding all afternoon after I, after I study it, and, and after, especially after these recordings. I tell you, God's Spirit will stay with me for several hours. My cup's full. But it, but it, 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 it drains out, you know. If we, I don't know if there's such a thing having a hole in your cup, but... But y'all know what I'm talking about. And the next thing you know, I, I, the same thing I taught on, I thought was was, was something I would never stumble of. I was stumbling all over it. Uh, but if we taught the same verse every Sunday, I still would struggle during the week. So Paul would say this, and Peter did the same thing. A lot of the writers, that it, he said this in verse 1, it is no trouble again that I remind you again. Well, he doesn't say remind you. He says to write the same thing again is no trouble to me. The same thing, I'm going to tell you the same thing over and over and over. You need that. You need repetition. That's why every day is important. But anyway, getting over to 12. Let's read that, and we'll, we'll close on some thoughts. Not that I have already, remember, this is the goal of life. This is finishing well. This is avoiding any loss of reward. Not that I have already obtained it or have already become perfect, but I press on so that I may lay hold of that for which I, I was laid hold of by Jesus. That's kind of what we talked about, what God's plan for you is. He has a plan. He's laid hold of you. Brethren, I do not regard myself as having laid hold of it yet, but one thing I do is forgetting what lies behind, praise God, and reaching forward to what lies ahead. There it is, reaching ahead. What's tomorrow? I press on toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Let us therefore, as many are as perfect, have this attitude. And if there is anything you have, a, that if there is in Excuse me. And if in anything you have a different attitude, that's exactly what all these we just talked about is different wrong attitudes. God will reveal reveal this to you also. In other words, He's going to help you in in those. Uh, however, let us keep living by the same standard to which we have attained. That attainment. There's something about that. What we've attained in Christ. But but interesting. And they just kind of summarize it real quick. Um, the goal of life. Never think that you're there. Please never think that you've ever arrived anywhere. Uh, like the teachable spirit. Think about that. Have a teachable spirit. Don't ever think you know it all. Never rely on past deeds. You don't have to look back at your sins, but don't look back at the good things you did for Christ. Uh, that causes complacency. causes even like quitting. Oh, God, Lord, I did all of this. I'm done. You're never done. Um, don't do that. Um, the goal of life is to press on, Paul says here. Press on. That's a... Uh, that, Verse 14 is a foundational verse. Many, many, many people have preached on that verse and taught on that verse. But to press on, to be like Jesus and, and to press on for the for the prizes ahead and always be led by the Spirit of God. That's what 15 says. If you got a bad attitude, God will reveal that to you. He'll help you. And um, and he will discern those bad attitudes that we got to get rid of through repentance and watch your walk. Man, you got to watch your walk. I don't know how many times it's been. Even when John wrote over there, beware, beware, Jesus would say, beware of how you walk, uh, your daily repentance, 
um, and your conscience stay clear uh, and close to God. Fear, fear your mind with the things of God and not the world. And, and, and have that goal in mind that we're going to live our life for, for the Lord to be more like Him. Um, and uh, if we have that, if we have that goal of finishing well and being obedient, we will, in a sense, be achieving that full reward that God has for us. Um, and folks, it's never too late. It is never too late. Let me tell you what, what, it is, what is too late um, is, uh, it, it's, it's, it's stumbling and falling and not getting up. I mean, giving up uh, when you have a hard time, when ministries don't go like you think or, or like you hoped or what have you and giving up, you never give up. You always press on. Uh, a righteous man, he stumbles seven times what he gets up seven times. He never gives up. He never gives up his faith. And he stays with it, uh, no matter what, what it looks like in the world as, as far as being successful or not. And this complacency thing is very important. Never get satisfied with where you're at. You're in trouble. You're in trouble as a, as, as a believer whenever you're satisfied as to where you're at. Uh, and we're that, that up, and I love that. I press on toward the goal and the prize of the upward call, the upward call of, of God in Christ, the upward call. That is all. That is that that calling is that full reward. If I am if I am uh, pursuing, the Bible speaks of that much. You got to seek and go and pursue. Matthew six thirty three, uh, seek the righteousness of uh, you know seek his righteousness and his kingdom, uh, and this full reward will be yours. And that is the whole point of this lesson and this whole series, is 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 how when we when we give an account to God of our life that we be found worthy of a full reward. And these are the things we, uh, that we talked about, this hypocrisy, this judgmentalism, unforgiveness, uh, uh, these things we talked about, deception this morning that would cause us to receive less than a full reward. So maybe it's been a little clear to you about that. I hope we haven't talked over anyone's head because if we had, I'm confused because I, I am not the greatest Bible scholar, but I know God's spirit. I know his words. Uh, is is true and and it's caused me to really really get in here and study and dig and and uh, I just don't want to I don't want to make it more complicated than it is. We just need to live in obedience to God, be more like Jesus, and these things will work themselves out. So thank you for listening. And uh, next week we'll continue on. Uh, we got we got several things we're thinking about looking at here. Don't know don't even know if I got it organized yet exactly. But degrees of rewards and degrees of punishment there plainly spoken in the Bible. We have the crowns to come next, which is really was going to be the original, just the five crowns, and God's just taken in a different direction. Um, uh, special rewards. The apostles are going to receive a special reward. That's interesting just to talk about and think about. Uh, but rewards, it's the whole subject, eternal rewards. And so we'll look at some of those things next week. And, um, and, um, and, and so until then, we'll close in prayer. And thank you again for listening, and I pray God's word goes out in power. Lord, we thank you for your word. Thank you for this uh, lesson of eternal rewards. I pray that you would steer us and guide us around those things that cause us a loss or reward. And God, give us uh, that we not quench or grieve your spirit in any way. Uh, and you would reveal to us, as, uh, as it says here in Philippians 3, Lord, that that uh, you'll reveal those things and, and, and call us to that repentant heart and, and, uh, and that we would uh, uh, turn away from those things that would cause us loss. Uh, God, we don't just hurt our own reward, but we hurt our, our witness. And we might cause someone else to stumble. And I pray you would help us there too, God, not to do those things. Uh, and it is so easy. There's a lot of stumbling people today, God. They are stumbling all over the place. And uh, I pray that you would give us the, the, the heart to live our lives in a way that we're pressing on for the, for the prize of the, 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 the upward call uh, God, that those people might look upon us and look upon your word that they, they might uh, cease to stumble uh, and to, to begin to live right. And so, Lord, we thank you this day. Thank you for this lesson. I pray for those that don't know you, that have heard it, that they would be a, they, they would be a calling, uh, that you would call them into your kingdom, God, and they would know that they need you. Uh, Lord, we are, we're, we're all sinners, and the, the two the difference between the two is, is, is one group knows they're sinners and the other group doesn't. And those that know their sinners must have Jesus, and, and we seek him for that forgiveness. So we ask these things in the name of our Savior and our hero in heaven, Lord Jesus Christ. Amen and amen.